Welcome to Living Destiny Church, where your destiny comes alive. We're located at 550 East Little Creek Road in Norfolk, Virginia. Here at Living Destiny, our mission is to discover, develop, and deploy godly, global, kingdom-minded leaders and disciples of Jesus Christ. You're about to listen to another life-changing message. Get ready for some divine revelation. Here is Reverend Dr. Moses Asamoah, Jr. Are you ready for the Word of God? Hallelujah. Father, we thank you that your word is alive and active, all of you and none of me. Let revelation flow freely. Build us up for your glory in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Amen. Last week we talked about purity, MP4, right? Manifestation comes from purity, prayer, presence, and power. And we spent time with purity and that God requires us to walk holy before him then we talked about the five levels of holiness if you didn't hear the message go back and listen to it the five levels of holiness and we dwelt on the fact that let your garment always be white and let your head lack no oil somebody say hallelujah today we are going to jump into the presence of god somebody say the presence of god now it is very important i began this on tuesday okay tuesday i laid a good foundation on on the on the presence of god and and uh, talked about how to enter the rest of god please please if you cannot make it physically on tuesday please go to the website and go to the youtube channel and listen to it i can there is so much to release i cannot teach it every sunday right and so tuesday's teaching is not any less than sunday's you understand tuesday is not like oh we're just doing a few but no i'm teaching we are praying we are digging in so don't miss that part of the teaching in the house amen so go listen to it and make sure that you are you are connected with that flow somebody say amen the presence of god is the answer to the questions of seasons in our life the presence of god is the answer to questions about seasons in our life Seasons of waiting, seasons of sowing, seasons of breakthrough, seasons of delayed harvest, whatever season you find yourself in, the presence of God, understanding the presence of God solves that problem. Someone say hallelujah. Uh, because it is, very, it is very frustrating when we go through seasons where we are sowing, but we don't see the harvest. Someone say Hallelujah. Anybody ever been there? You are sowing and you are sowing and you are praying and you are sowing and you are praying and you have changed everything possible. You have moved your furniture around. I mean, you now now you go to bed at 7 p.m. You've done everything possible. But it doesn't seem like anything is changing. The answer is the presence of God. Someone said the, the presence of God. When you find yourself in seasons of trial and processing that never seem to end. I want, to, I want to encourage you, but I have to speak this fact as well. Or maybe I'll ask it into a question, then walk away. Does it ever end? Does the processing of God ever end? Does the pruning of God ever end? Does the challenging of God ever end? So then why are we so much in a hurry to get out? See, we haven't accepted the fact that it never ends. And it's unbearable for us to think that a good God will always be processing. And if it's not one thing, it's another. I am am done with humility now. He breaks me into holiness. After holiness, it's my money. If it's after money, it's my body. After body, it's my... It's like, when does this stop? Until we are transformed into the image of Christ. The work never stops. So can we settle in our hearts uh, that you will always be in a season of trial? You didn't like that? Can we settle... That you will always be in a season of trial. That doesn't mean that you won't. You see, the fact that I am in trial doesn't mean I don't walk in abundance. See, that's the mistake we do. Oh, I'm going through. No, I can be going through and still rejoicing. I can be going through and still be prospering. 
God can be dealing with my pride and my anger and whatever it is. And whilst he's chopping me, I am still rejoicing in him and I'm still prospering. But we have come to understand trial or one difficult part of your life to equal everything. Your car is beautiful. It's nice. Your house is nice. Your job is good. Let somebody splash a little dirt on the tire. Oh my God, can you stand it? Your attitude changes. Because of one tire, because of one part of your life, you stink up the whole life. You are no longer grateful. Everything is bad. Everything is evil. Because, you are, because God is saying you, you talk too much. Or God is saying that humble yourself. Or God is saying that you can't go here anymore. You can't do this anymore. Oh, I'm in a season of trial. I can no longer smile. Listen, mm-mm. I am in trial and I am smiling. Standing here right now, God is beating me up. Today, hmm, I had a time with him. I was like, eh, hmm. You see, after you go through some, some things for a long time, you just accept it. Right? And this is not like an old thing. This is a new level. It's like, bam, let's go. I say, mm-mm. But though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I will rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. I'm talking about the presence of God. And that in the midst of trial, whatever season I find myself in, I am always surrounded by the presence of God. So I am joyful at all times. Someone say hallelujah. You must, you must, you must... um, Capture the presence of God as the answer to every problem of your life. If God is with me, who and what can be against me? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. Yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because my God is with me. And so if God is with you, does it matter whether it's rainy season or sunny season? or snow season or dry season does it matter if god is with you he makes rivers in the desert he calls manna to fall he opens up seas so if god is with you does it matter the season we dwell so much on the season we disqualify the presence of god many of us walk like god is not with us I love you, God. I love you. Now, God, Charlie, there's so much on my mind. Father, I love you. I bless you. Now, can I go and deal with the issue that is happening in my life? Even if you talk to him about it, you don't see him as the answer to that problem. God, you give me the strength. Stay back. Let me take the strength I got to go fight the battle. And then, if I run out, I'll be sad. I'll stay there for a little bit. Now, remember, oh, there's a God that I'm going to come back and get more power. Uh-uh. Bring God with you. Bring the presence of God with you. Everywhere you go, I am in the presence of a mighty God. And so no matter what season I find myself in, that is how you will manifest the power of God. Not taking time off the presence. Sometimes you're in the spirit, sometimes you are not. Sometimes you are in the spirit, sometimes you are not. You will not manifest the fullness of God spattering like that. Someone say hallelujah. So the presence of God is very key uh, to us walking in the fullness of what God is doing. So we may ask ourselves, why am I still praying, sowing, serving, living purely when I don't see fruit? The answer is the presence of the Lord. Someone say hallelujah. I'll deal with this more on Tuesday, um, but... The, the goal of purity is to be like him. The goal of purity is to be like Jesus. Someone say, like Jesus. So I am being purified so that I can be like him. The goal of the presence of God is to be with him. Purity is to transform me to be like him. The presence of God is to give me an opportunity to be with him you understand church and so in order for us to walk in the fullness of god's manifestation purity yes as i'm being transformed i am with him the only way i can go through every season of my life is because the goal is to be with him someone say the goal is to be with him 
Say one more time. The goal is to be with him. The goal is not breakthrough. The goal is not supernatural manifestation. The goal is not promotion. The goal is not marriage. The goal is not more money. The goal is not promotion. The goal is none of that. And the goal is that I will be with him. And so it doesn't matter what I'm going through. So far as I am with him, it is well with my soul. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, verse number 8. The beginnings of all things. Genesis 3, verse 8. And they, Adam and Eve, heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from his presence, from the presence of God among the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called to Adam and said, where are you? And then he says, you know, we are naked. Oh, no, 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 no. The thing is, there was com continual communion with the presence of God. And so when God showed up and did not find them, he was like, where are you? Where are you? I see you every day. Every day we meet. In the cool of the garden, we have fellowship together. The essence of, of, of God making us is so that what? We can be what? With him. Someone say with him. And so God comes in the garden. The presence of the Lord is there. And man has fled. You see why we had to talk about purity first? Because you cannot be impure and engage the presence of God. Impurity makes you run from the presence of God. And so we deal with purity, the blood, the grace, and all that. And then we walk into his prayer and say, Lord God, here I stand. Someone say, hallelujah. The presence of God was, 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 was there. God was drawing them. God was calling them. But they hid themselves because of sin. So I ask myself this question, what is, what is a mighty God? Mm. What is a great and mighty God? What is the God of all the universe making man for? To have dominion on the face of the earth. The earth is his foot too. Please practice with it. The earth is his foot too. So if something that you can put your foot on, pick it up, toss it, head it, it's your foot too. What is the essence of creating man? You understand? We talk about be fruitful and multiply, dominate. Yes, that's for us here to dominate. The empowerment and the mandate to dominate and to rule and to manifest Christ. Yes, but the first thing is the presence of God. God did not make you because he couldn't handle earth. God did not make us because he couldn't control earth. He created. He created. Let there be and there was. So we are so engulfed with the earth and what we must do and how we must succeed and how we must break through and the more money and the bigger car and the bigger titles and the bigger this and the bigger that even to the point of church i want the biggest anointing and i want the biggest ministry and i want oh calm down the essence of your creation is not that god could not do what he's asking you to do actually god even has stronger faster more obedient alternatives angel go ahead one angel ten thousand done one moment you go why <laughs> i'll go tomorrow you think god if, if if the goal was results we are not the answer if the goal was to get things done you and i are not the answer we delay, we disobey, we are, and like we, we complain. Angels at the word of the law, they are stronger, they are bigger, 
The thing is, the difference is that they are not made in his image. But when it comes to productivity, angels are more productive than us. One angel. It's all done. So, if, if, if the goal of us being made by God is not productivity and activity, there must be another reason. The reason why he came to the garden he said, let us fellowship. He made man so that man can commune with him in relationship. Then out of that relationship comes dominion. Out of that relationship, we rule and we reign. So the primary goal of your life must be to be with him. Not a big anointing, not a big ministry, not, not, not a great business, not more money, and not all of that. Your primary goal is that I must be with him. Does it make sense why we are doing this fast? Because everything else is keeping us from being with him. Your primary assignment is to be with him. Because everything else God can do by himself. Every activity God can do by himself. So the presence of God. So that we can be with him. Let's go to the book of Mark chapter 3. Mark chapter 3 verse number 14. Then he appointed 12 that they might what? Come on, say with me. That they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach. The preaching, the ministry came after being with. But we are intoxicated with the gifts of the spirit. We get angry when people don't acknowledge our prophetic, ecclesiastical, cardinal, pope authority. Do you know who's standing before you? I contend. We don't care. We are not impressed if you are not with him. Oh, let me say this before I forget because this came to me later. We deceive ourselves and we deceive others. When we try to sell them a God, we don't spend time with. We deceive ourselves and deceive others. When we try to tell them about God is good, come to Jesus. We tell them about a God that we don't even spend time with. If you love him so much and you are saying come to Jesus, why are you not addicted to his presence? Why are you not desiring as the deer pounds for the water brooks? So my soul longs for you. Early in the morning will I seek you. My soul longs for you. My flesh thirsts for you to see your power and your glory. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. To be with him. He called them that they might be with him. The presence of the Lord is the answer to every season of your life. The, the, the presence of the Lord is the answer to your purpose. Stop chasing purpose when you don't have the presence. Because productivity flows out of intimacy. Conception comes from intimacy. Uh, birth comes from intimacy. You can't produce when there's no intimacy with the presence of God. We are trying to produce things and mass and copy things and make things happen. But we are not going to the source from which it is produced. We are trying to build our life without the presence of the Lord. I'm not saying you don't pray. I know you pray. But prayer for you is a weapon. Today I'm about to do great and mighty things that I have planned to do. Lord God give me the strength to execute my plan today. I'm pressing you past the disciplined, religious prayer time, which is excellent, which is required. If you don't build the discipline, the presence will not be there because you'll be all over the place, right? And so it's important. 
But we are going to a place where, 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 where I love to be in your presence. With your people singing prayer. I love your presence. Lord, I, I don't have anywhere to go. I'll just stay in your presence. Lord God, I just want to be here. I know, I know I said I'll be here for 30 minutes to an hour, but I just, I just, I love you, Lord. Many of us have not been that place in a long time. Your worship of God has been regimented. Prayer, word, bam, bam, now let's move on to my life. But that place of getting lost in his presence. Because in his presence, I find myself. In his presence, I am complete. In his presence, I fulfill my primary call. In his presence, I am complete. In his presence, I am refreshed. So Lord God, I love your presence. Many of us can sit in a room for more than 30 minutes without looking at our phone. Jumping up, looking through the window, scratching, doing something. Like being the presence of God is like, I gotta go. Like, you have to be moving. Be still and know that I am God. The, 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 the maturity comes when you can stand in the presence of the Lord. Say, so Lord, I just want to be with you today. Don't you love it when somebody calls you and they don't need anything? They didn't come with a list of what you can do for me. They just said, I was just checking on you, see how you're doing. You know, I just want to hang with you. Like, what you need? Nothing. I just want to know you. Church, that is the primary rule of your life. Until you get that one down. Every pursuit of goals and dreams and assignment and purpose is going to be marshmallow. You will have a form but you will lack the power. Because the power is in the presence. The power is even, if I can say this. The power is not in the oratory and the speaking and the business plan. The power is in the altar behind the speaking. <laughs> Do you hear me? The power of your life is in the altar that sponsors your business. It's in the altar that sponsors your speaking. It's in the altar that sponsors your way of life. So somebody can come with a, a perfect business plan. And then you come up with a simple one. And you show up. And when you talk, they're like, mm, there's something about this guy. The presence of the Lord. So let's stop pursuing the activity. And fall in love with the presence of the Lord. Someone say hallelujah. And so the disciples were called. That they might be with him. And then they will go forth. And do the work of the Lord. The goal. And the drive of life. Is not answers and results. And church that is very anti-cultural. Our culture doesn't allow that. If you don't have a goal. You are useless. If you don't have a plan, what you do with your life? Right? And that is important. But that cannot come before the presence of God. Before you even create your business plan. Father, what part of this business? Uh, or, or what part of your glory do you want this business to manifest? Uh, Father, give me. Let, let it be born. Out of intimacy with God. Not because you, you saw the market. And you saw that everybody. The next trend is this. So if I do this for my marriage. If I do this for my children. If I do this for my business. Then I will make it. We all tried it. Someone say hallelujah. When the market was booming. <coughs> the housing market. It was booming at the wrong rate. But it was booming nonetheless. Right? People who didn't have jobs, could get houses, three, four houses. People were just buying it. You know, so I just finished, uh, I finished, what's the name? I was about to finish my master's. I, I, I was about finishing. I said, oh, Charlie, let's get a house. Because that's where, if it's booming, so let's get it. When we get it, and then very soon, if I bought it for 100000 
in about two years, maybe like 125, 130, the value is going up. Refinance all my student loans. Pow, one touch. Perfect. So right now I have one payment. All my loans are paid. I have one house. Beautiful. The moment I got in, pam, the market, pam. My plan. <laughs> <laughs> what shall I do? <laughs> what step should I take? Hey, lost the house? Because the house was the plan. Many are the plans of a man, but the will of the Lord shall be done. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will direct your path you cannot go with the next trend the way of your life your next step cannot be the next trend it must be born out of the presence of god it must be what born out of the presence of god it must be born out of the presence of god it must be conceived out of the presence of god out of your union with god birth something otherwise you'll be bringing illegitimate children and asking God to put his name on it. Someone say hallelujah. Our culture says that results, results, results. And we value our relationships based on activity. Results and outcomes. The question is, how can you help me move ahead? If you are not helping me move ahead, I don't appreciate our relationship. You hear me, church? I have our relationship are all based on results, results, results. But I want to take time to, to share this. We're talking about presence. My father was 85 years old when he died. 85 and change. You know, plus or minus the weather. Because there was no birth certificate. So, you know. In the time that King Uzziah died, right? He saw the Lord. So... <laughs> In the year when there was that storm and it was a rain and some guy became president around that time you were born hey so that was his birth date <laughs> so we chose one for him hallelujah <laughs> there is something right i was I, 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 I was a son of his old age my biological mom was 44 he was probably like in his 50s 55 ish before i was born but i just loved to sit at his feet talk about anything it is not the knowledge alone i was receiving being in his presence imparted something into me that could not be learned in a book when and I'm pushing you to do this, but let me, let me, let me give you this, this reason. I'm asking you to come to the conference, right? Not because it's, it's, it's not money, otherwise I won't do it at all, forget it. But listen, I can sit with Bishop over coffee and just sit. The information he's giving me, I have heard it before. I have written it before. Actually, in our last meeting, in our last coaching meeting, he gave it to me. So it is not the information. It is the presence. Some people carry certain things where you cannot, you, you cannot research it. It is, it, is, it is by virtue of them being in your life. Things begin to shift because of the altar and the power and the sacrifices that they have paid. You get the virtue of harvesting where you have not sown. If you go by the principle of productivity, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. You will end up with two fruits. You spend time with a man like that without even trying. When he leaves, one phone call that he makes brings a hundred fruits to you without you even trying but if you sit with him and like 
uh, he's talking, you know what, you know, how is life, you know, how's, how's everything, you're doing all right, you know, I encourage you to do this and do that, and you're like, oh, my friend, let's talk productivity, let's talk about goals and purposes, that's what we do, we dismiss people that bring value into our life, because it is not meeting our checklist, when I'm done with this, I must do this, I must do that, and, and, and the time with them seems to be interrupting your checklist, You think time with Jesus when he wasn't doing miracles was a waste of time? Hear me. We like miracles, signs, and wonders, and displays. So if God is not doing any of that, if there are no miracles, if there is no display, he just says, come with me. Let's go to the other side of the lake. Let's just go. Oh, Jesus, we have goals, we have things to do. We have missed the power of presence. The power of being with, just, just be with. I think the best example I can give you is Starbucks, even though I don't like their logo. Starbucks, if you go to Starbucks, you don't have to be there for more than 30 minutes. 15 minutes, get out. You smell like coffee. You can taste the coffee in your mouth even though you have not bought coffee. The atmosphere is saturated with coffee. When you leave, oh my God, I have been to Starbucks. That is the essence of impartation. You didn't drink any coffee. You didn't buy any coffee. But in the presence, you began to smell different. Your, 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 your life begins to change. So if this menial, simple, worldly example, what would you be receiving when you show up to his presence without a checklist and say, Lord, I have just come to be with you? What will be the impartation on your life? Moses went up to the mountain to meet with God and by the time he came back, his face was shining. And I, I, I told this on Tuesday that... It would be one thing if the light was shining and Moses' face was, uh, face was also shining. But you know, eventually it was diminishing, right? We could get, oh, it looks like you have been in light. It wasn't that. He was with the light of God. He came back. He himself became a light source. He was shining. That is impartation. It is bigger than goals. It is bigger than a checklist. It is bigger than, listen, look for the people in your life who bring impartation greater than people who, look, who tell you information you can find on Google. Right now, Google, YouTube, you can find everything. But the wisdom to know how to put it together comes by impartation. You hear me, church? I'm inviting you to the presence of God where we get impartation. I'm inviting you to live the lifestyle that values relationship above doing. Because many of your friends you were doing stuff with. Gone. The things you were doing seemed good. Gone. It seemed fun. Gone. But time in the presence of the Lord. Time in the presence of the Lord and time with somebody who spends time in the presence of the Lord. Pharaoh only had to spend a few moments with Joseph to find a solution for his kingdom. I had a dream, yeah, seven years of of uh, increase seven years of farming do this do that take this bury that that you are the man he said there is a god in heaven daniel said there is a god in heaven that reveals mysteries stop walking like a traditional me a human being everything is fact fact fact, fact. show me show me there are certain things I cannot show you. It is by impartation. It's by, it's by, it's by communion. It's by, it's by fellowship. That's what we call koinonia. 
giving and a receiving. Something is imparting and you are receiving. All of a sudden, have you noticed that when you talk to somebody for a long time, you end up repeating their phrases? So imagine if you spent time with God, what phrases would you be repeating? What would be coming out of your life if you are just communing with God, heart to heart, spirit to spirit, impartation and flowing. Every single day, you are faithful to come in for your fellowship. And when we get to prayer, I'll talk about this. Where your prayer list goes beyond, give me, give me, give me, give me. Where your prayer list, I have come, my father. What is the kingdom agenda today? I want to do what pleases you. That is how we manifest the power of God. But this checklist, gotta go, gotta go. I gotta pray after I pray. I gotta call after I call. I gotta write after this. I get... You get busy. How many of you have begun a business that did not work? How many of you signed up for a business and did nothing with it? You actually registered it and did nothing with it. Uh -huh. And so the registration and the checklist is not so. It is the impartation that matters. Somebody say hallelujah. So we are valuing the presence above the doing. Somebody say amen. Isaiah 26 verse 3. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts you. The answer to not knowing when a season is going to end in your life is because I trust God. <laughs> the answer to when is this going to stop in my life is I trust God. Because, child of God, when you spend time with someone you trust, it is not what you do. It's just simply being with them. Is that not so? It's not what you do. Mm -hmm. Could you? My son came to, came to me. Uncle, I need to talk to you. Okay, let's talk. Uh, by the way... I have to go to the garden to pick up some vegetables. Jump in the car. Let's go pick up vegetables. The communion that happens is not in the meeting. When I'm digging dirt and you are with me and we are talking, there's impartation. And it's not what you are doing, it's that I am with you. Don't you say that to your, to your, to your BFF, your best friends? What are we doing today? I don't care. Let's do something. Anything. Can you watch TV? Go outside? Like, let's just do anything. The key is not what we are doing. The key is that I am with you. We can be silent and stare at each other. It is fun. We can go outside and do something. It is fun. While I wait in whatever season I am in, no matter how long it takes, I am at peace because God is with me the presence of god is with me therefore it doesn't matter how long this season lasts god is with me while i wait the answer may never come oh jesus the answer may what the answer may what you, you don't know god eh <laughs> the answer may never come because the essence of prayer is not answered prayer. The essence of prayer is communion with God. So I've taught you stop looking for answered prayer. Because he's able to do what? Exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ever ask or think. And so whilst you are in prayer for a promotion, God says hang with me because I want to pour some wisdom into you. You are praying for a car and God says wisdom. Tell me how you measure wisdom in your hand. I don't see what God is doing. God is saying, hey, all the power I am moving inside of you, all the things I'm pouring because you don't see the red car. Your father has a red car. Because you don't see the red car that your father is trying to give you, and so therefore you are saying God is not moving in your life. <laughs> this, 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 these are my people. They ever tried, my people. <laughs> Yesterday, I was talking to the great man of God. Sorry, I was <laughs> It's my tribe sometimes people talk like that. 
But you cannot measure wisdom until you see the impact. So God wants to pour some things in your life. You are saying, God, all I need is a two-dollar raise. I just want a two-dollar raise. And God is like, no, no, no. Uh, my, my, my presence will impart something greater to you. And so if what you are praying for, you don't see, doesn't mean that God did not give you better. It was on the prayer line. We, we were praying and this phrase came out. No one ever leaves me because God is with me. No one ever leaves me because God is with me. If you leave me, huh? God is with me. If you don't leave me, God, it doesn't matter who has left your life or who is one. Go, my friend, go. The presence of the Lord is the answer to everything. Stop thinking tangible. We walk by faith and not by sight. Engage the presence of the Lord and begin to walk in a dominion. And that says that I am here and we are about to tear things up. Not because of my skill and my resume, but because I came with the God of all the universe. My power is not in my ability. My power is in whom I have been spending time with. Oh, you Goliath, uncircumcised finish time. You come at me with sword and knives, but I come at you in the name. I'm coming at you with the one that I have been spending time with. Amen. That is your power. Amen. It's not in the sword and the knife. Even King Saul gave him his uniform. He said, this is too much. This position, this title, all the, they are too much for me. I need something. Ah, the presence of the Lord is all I need. Let that be the source of your life. So even if what you are praying for, you don't get the answer to. God is with me. I shall not fear. God is with me. I will not lack anything. God is with me. He's doing something greater than what I can see. So, so far as God is with me, I am content. So child of God, protect your God is with me. Because impurity, if I can borrow from it, is meant to keep you from being with God. So the enemy gives you opportunities just so that you are not in the place of the presence. Because guess what? That's what his, that was his role. He knows the power of the presence. So he will do everything. They got kicked out of Eden, weren't they? Did they not get kicked out of Eden? What do you think they lost? Did they lose their sight? Their strength? They lost the presence of God. If you will catch this, walking in the presence of God, loving the presence of God. So even if I don't get my answer or it comes in a way that I don't expect, I am at peace because God is with me. The seasons of my life are opportunities to build relationship and memories with my God. Being with me, being with him, is more important than how fast I can get out of this season. You hear me, church? And when you are with God, don't worry, this series is just going to build up. When you are with God, you don't fear who. When you are with God, you are, you are like, sir, when you are with God, you are like, it is well. In the midst of trouble, of the fire, you are like, I'm good. The seasons of your life do not determine your strength because God is with you. And he's a timeless God. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And so he has no limit. So, so far as I'm with him, I am always on time. So far as you are with God, you are always on time. It is people that tell you, you are six months late, you are five months late, you are ten years behind. But in God, you are present. So value the presence of the Lord. I want to end with this. Love God more than you love his power. Love God more than you love what he can do for you. Love him for him. Ah. Love God because he is God. Love him because he is God. Like, like, you know, we say, seek his face and not just his head. 
What can you give me? What can you give me? Be a lover of Christ. You hear me, church? Be a lover of Christ. Like, like I, am, I am obsessed with my Jesus. That I am in love with my God. And that I regulate my life based on my relationship with Jesus. Now that Jesus and I are in a relationship, uh, you know, certain things we can't do no more. Certain places we can't go no more. Certain people we can't be with no more. Because I am in a relationship with Jesus. And I'm going to protect that with my life. Please stand up on your feet. The presence of God. So if you look at your life right now and you are not spending time in the presence of God, let's fix it today. If you are spending time in the presence of God, but you are rushing Him and it's kind of like speed dating. Holy Spirit, like you're just speed dating God if that's what you are doing. Let's repent. If you're not waiting for the... Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. If this message blessed you, click these videos to watch more. God bless, and we'll see you next week.